morning, as we go to the Pasha of the week, the Chitas of the day, we go to um, chapter 37, verse number 12, in the portion of Ayeshev. Vayelchu elchav lides et seinavim, and the brothers went to, to take care of the father's sheep, Bishchem, in the city of Shechem. Now she says, Nokal al es, Nokal al es, the, uh, the dot on the S, the word actually, it means that they really went to S, they went to a pasture themselves, whatever, many interpretation to with what the Rashi means, Rashi doesn't say exactly what, what it means, but uh, there's, you can look it up in the Medrash. Your brothers are with the sheep in Shechem, Shechem, I'm going to send you to them, to him, to them. And he said, here I am. Now she says an expression of modesty. When a person says, here I am. It's Avram Avinu. Everybody learned this from Avram Avinu to say, Hineni. And I'll send you to the uh, expression of earnestness and modesty and eagerness. He went with alacrity to fulfill his father's command to do the mitzvah kidab kibbut aveim. Even though he knew that his brothers hated him, he's putting himself in danger. He told him, "Go and see, go and see that your brothers are good, are, are, are at peace." By Shalom Atzayin and the uh, welfare of the flock. By bring me back something, a word. By and he sent him from the valley of Chevron. By Yahweh Shechema, and he came to Shechem. Now she says, but isn't Chevron on a mountain? What do you mean the valley when Chevron is on a mountain as a state and ascended to the south and he came to Chevron? But it's understood that he sent him for the depth of the deep counsel of the righteous man who's buried in Chevron. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, essence now starts off to the promise of Avram Avinu that the Yidin are going to go into Gullus to fulfill what is said to Abraham at the, 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 between the, when the, when he, the, by, by the British made up Sodom, that God told him that his children will go into exile. So Rasi says you should know in general, Shechem, till today, Shechem is Muchen Lepranis, is destined for misfortune. There the tribe sinned, there Dina was sinned. There the kingdom of the house of David is divided. As it says, Yerachavim came to Shechem. So it's a known place of, of, of a hot place and a extremely troubling place. Even so, Yishan, a man found him in Yisrael, he was like straying, he was looking for his brothers. By Yishlema, and the man asked him, what are you looking for? Now she says, who is this man? It's actually a malach, it was an angel. It was the angel who was called Gabriel, as it says, and the man Gabriel. So we know that the angel Gabriel is called an ish, a man, so to say, in the Torah. He said, I'm looking for my brothers. Maybe you know where there is 10 guys out there. Maybe you know where they are. He said to no, they traveled away from here. I actually heard them saying, they said, let's go to Dyson. And Echov and Yasef went after them. He found them in Dyson. Ah, she says, they removed themselves from brotherhood. They are planning against you. And they said, to seek regarding a legal pretext by which they can put him to death. Daisan is a concept of a das, comes from the word law. So he told them they actually made a court, it's a medish, they made a court case against you, and a, uh, that, they, that they have judged you to death, um, that they which can put you to death, God forbid. So here he told them exactly what they're doing, and he still in all Yosef went. According to the simple meaning of it, the place name, the biblical verse never loses simple sense. You don't remember that. 
It's a general, very important rule that even though you have a lot of midrashim and a lot of commentaries on every word of the Torah, ein mikra yoitzi midei shutei. You never take the Torah out of its simple sense. There's a place called Dyson. That's it. Even though it's, you can't find it today, such a name, there's a place called Dyson. That's the way it is. Like Yiru Aisim Mirachik, and they saw him from a distance. But Tadim Yikra, before he came to them, by Yisnachlu Aisla Misa, they plotted against him. Here they made a. They said, "Wow, everything is working out." The Protest. We made a whole thing, and look at he's coming. The smile and the chavah. Remember, they were filled with plots and cunning. Aisai, uh, okay, Aisai against him is like with it against him. Ois itoi, vayemi ish elachin. And one man said to the other, This dreamer is coming. Let's us kill him. That's how we, we officially decided that we're going to kill him. And we'll throw him in one to the pits. We'll say a wild animal and he ate him. Let us see what will be with his dreams. The Rama Rabbi Yitzhak, Rashi says, Rabbi Yitzhak said, Rabbi Isaac said, this verse says, so to say, this verse screams out, Dasheni, this verse tells you, this. that's the, that's like right after the previous Rashi, Rashi would say, you don't take the verse out of the simple meaning, and now Rashi that says, Rama Rabbi Yitzhak, but don't forget, Rabbi Yitzhak says, Rabbi Yitzhak, some say that was his father, Rabbi Yitzhak, Rabbi Yitzhak said, Rabbi Dasheni, please expand upon me, don't just, the, say more about this this statement. Ruach Hakodesh came. This is actually an expression of the Holy Spirit that came through them. Let us kill him. But the verse concludes, and we'll see what comes out of his dreams. Let us see what happens with his will will stand up. You're a mind. That's what God speaks. God says the last couple of words is God responding. You want to kill him. We'll see what happens. How are you gonna kill him, and if he's gonna if he's gonna die, you'll see what will ultimately happen. That his dreams will come true, and uh, it is impossible that there the brother are saying, and we'll see what will happen. Will come to a dream because they will kill him. His dreams will come to a naught. So what do you mean? What, what's the expression? So therefore, is the Abish to saying, so to say, God is saying, you want to kill him, but you'll see what will happen with the dream. But Yishmael Ruven and Yeruven heard this. And he saved them from their hands. Not on my watch. We're not going to kill somebody. We're not going to kill anybody here. Zuhi Misa, we're not going to kill him. We're not going to spill any blood. Let us throw him into a pit. And we'll leave. We'll die. Because when we get out, get out of the pit. But none of us are going to take our uh, knife and kill a person. We won't put, won't put our hands on this on this kid. But his idea was, his idea was, they would travel on, he'll come back to the pit, he'll take his brother out of the pit, I love him, and bring him back to his father. <clears throat> now she says, again, the Holy Spirit, God testified for Reuven that he said this only to, how do you know this? Here you have Ruch HaKodesh. Nobody knows what's in Reuven's heart, but the Abishan knew what's in Reuven's heart. Hey, right? God, the Torah writes what's in Reuven's heart. To take him out, he said, I am the firstborn and the eldest of them. The sin will be attributed only to me, and therefore I need to save him. And that completes the Chumash for today. We now go to the Tanya of the day. We continue. <coughs> and this is the compilers for before. This is what the this is what the, the, the letter the Al Tadab is sent as an introduction to the Tanya. As we've seen before, the title page, the Al Tadab perceived himself as a mere compiler. Al Tadab didn't see himself as an author. He, can, he saw himself as a compiler. 
somebody who compiles things to brings things together. So that's what he says. This is a letter that the Alter Rebbe sent to all the uh, Chsidim of, of, of old Chsidim. Yevarchim to Reinu Vishmanei, may God, our stronghold, bless and guard them. Aleichem Ishim Ekra, to you worthy men do I call. This is an important letter, because if we understand this letter, you'll understand what the Alter Rebbe wanted with writing, with writing the Tanya. It's an important introduction. Shimulai Reit Fate Sedek. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness. Mevaksha Hashem, those who see God. And may the Almighty listen to you. From both the great, the spiritual status, to those that are small. Kalanche Shomainu Visainu Smuchashala. To all Anash, to all those that are part of Sidim. And in our land or nearby countries, each may each of his own place achieve peace. an eternal life. That's our celebration. Amen. Cain yehi Amen. May this be his will, God's will. In it's well known. That it's known what people speak. What people are saying, hearing words of guidance, moral guidance for a teacher addressing his students individually and directly is not the same as seeing it or reading it in a book, which are impersonal and addressed to reading audience at large. So therefore, it would be much better if you would be here. We would be together, and we would. I would tell you this verbally, face to face. The spoke word will have far greater effect than the written word, for two reasons. First of all, for the reader who gains such instruction in a book, will read it after his own manner and mind. You he, he won't he won't when you don't see the the the, the teacher. Uh, then you're just reading it out of a book. Then you you basically uh, detach from the from the from the teacher. So everyone will absorb the message according to his mental grasp and comprehension of that particular time. So if it is a good mood, he'll read it in a, in a good way. If he's in a bad mood, he'll read it in a bad way. If he's critical, he'll read it critically. If at that time. When he's reading it, his mind is all mixed up, confused. And they're wandering around, and you're wandering around in darkness. And the ideas pertain to God. It'll be very hard. It'll be very hard to see the light in the book. Because you are, we're, you're right now at that moment in a, in a, in a moment of a darkness. It's very hard to find the hidden light in books. Even though there's a beautiful light that you're reading in, in this book. And it's healing to the soul. So in case of personal guidance, on the other hand, a mentor can ensure that the message is understood fully and correctly. That's why it's much better when you're standing in front of the person, you're sitting in front of him. You make the person can see if you understand, can explain it differently. Make sure that you want to comprehend what he's saying. Now, the Rebbe now points out a second disadvantage of writing advice. By its very nature, its ability to inspire even the understanding reader is rest restricted to a specific audience. A book does not allow for the subject differences between one reader's character and the other one so now it comes, the book is not really made for everybody because maybe it's maybe it's written in a way for this person, for this audience, but is it not written for another audience? It will ne and it, of necessity leave some of its leadership untouched. al Rebbe next, next distinguishes between two categories of inspirational books. In those books belonging to the first category, this problem is more obvious and acute. In those secondary categories, less so. First category embraces those books that argue for pious conduct on the ground of human intellect. They are surely not affected, affect all readers equally. Owing to diversity of mind, 
and temperament among readers will profoundly inspire one reader and leave another indifferent. Second category comprises of those work found in the teachings of our sages. It would seem at first glance that such books, the problem of subjectivity, differences between readers would be irrelevant. Since they are based in the Tata, that's why Dr. Rebbe wrote that I'm a compiler. I just compile words of the of the Tata. When, you, when it comes from the Tata, the Tata is for everybody, which pertains every Jew without expect, expect, exception. Surely every Jew could be guided and inspired by them. So if everybody can be should be inspired by Chumash. Everybody should be inspired by Gemara. These are the words of God. They're not here for a certain audience. The Rebbe points out, however, that not every Jew is privileged to find a place in Torah and to derive instructional application to him as individuals. So therefore, even the second category is also problematic, not because it's not available for everybody. It is available. But nevertheless, not everybody understands it. Thus, the problem still, still obtains, still stands. How do you write a book? To a lesser degree. So Dr. Rebbe didn't want to write to Tanya, really. By mundane, aside from this aforementioned possibility that the reader, intellectual shortcut, may prevent him from proceeding like concealed in the holy books, is yet another difficulty. The books of piety founded upon human intelligence, intellect, surely, surely that effect is not made for all people. Because all intellects and minds are not alike. And the intellect of one man is not affected and aroused by that which affects the arousal the intellect of another. As our sages wrote in the Gemara, a blessed memory, it says, he who is wise in secret, ordained by the sages to receive a witnessing of gathering of 600,000 men, where praises God, uh, God in knowing the secrets of them all. If you see, if you see a gathering, the Gemara says, of 600,000 men, then you make a bracha, cham harazim. He who is wise in secret. That means that the, the Abish can bring together 600,000 people. Like by Martin Taylor, the Abish brought together ki ish echa, balev echa. That's a miraculous situation. Shein dey seim shavu zu lazu, dey seim dey mazu lazu. With their minds, meaning their opinions and feelings are all different one from the other. Kama shikasa wa ramban, zechein levracha, as ramban writes a blessed memory. The Mechamis in his book, the Chamesh Sham B'Pirush HaSifri, elaborating the comment of the Sifri on the verse, that Yeshua, Ish Asher Ruach Boy, Moshe Rabbeinu chose Yeshua, and God says, because he has the spirit, a man who, to whom there is a spirit. What does that mean? Sheyachalalich Neged Ruach Shekolech Aviyachat. Yeshua had the power, the capability to meet the spirit of every man which is an unbelievable accomplishment. So therefore, it's very hard to do that, <laughs> to be able to be a person that can talk to everybody. But even those works of Muslim, foundations, the peaks of holiness, meaning they are found in Midrashi, Chachmeinu, Zechenu, but all based not on human intellect, but they're based on the Spirit of God. Asher Ruach Hashem Dibabam, which the spirit of the Abish has spoken them, when we lost it, and the word and, and his words of in, in their tongues, even in the case of such works, there's still a problem. But I see and although the Tayda and God is one, and all the six hundred thousand general souls of Israel and individual souls and their offshoots. Add Nitzit Kalchka even the spark, the soul of a simple, simple Jew. Which is which is now a Jewish nation. We're all connected with, with the Torah. Varaisa and the Torah is connected with God. As it's known in the Zayah. So therefore, the Torah is for everybody. There's not a person that can that can say the Torah is not for him. 
The Torah talks for everybody because you are connect. We we are connected to God through the Torah, and as it's brought down the Zaya that that there's three things that connect each other: God with the Torah and the Jew with the Torah. We're all interconnected. So since the Torah does contain this uh, this uh, pretense to every Jew, those works found on Torah ought to appeal to every Jewish reader. Yet yeah, this is said in general way of the Jewish people as a whole. The statement of the Zaya speaks of the bond between Jewry in general with the Torah and its entirety. It does not refer to particular Jews seeking individual instruction in a specific area of Torah. And that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for a general connection like we all have an Ashama. We all are connected to the Torah. So uh, we all connected to God, but how does that, How do we do that in a practical way? What is? What do I do right now when I need to have a, a, an instruction right now? How do I find it in the Torah? Even though the Torah, the true the Torah was lent itself to interpretation by rule of general principle and specific application, and those applications may further be broken down even more specific details. And the truth is, every person can 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 find it. The Teda is Malash Heira. The Teda is called Teda because it's it's it comes from the from the word Teira to show the way. So every person can find in the Teda. He, he, he can go and find in the Teda what God wants from him. The Chol Nefesh Gat Yisrael Mushabay. It applies to each soul that is rooted in the Teda. Every one of us is connected to the Teda. Thus, the Teda contains not only general instruction for a nation as a whole, but also specific instruction for each individual. And we could find that. Uh, that's why the Al Rebbe wanted that every Jew should learn Chumash every day. And he, but the truth is, you, ha, you need to take an instruction every day. You have to live with the time. You have to live with the Pasha. So really, you, every day that we learn the Chumash, you should be able to take an instruction from the Torah what to do today. So, so despite the that's the difference, is, even though everybody's different, so the truth is, every one of us, when we learn Chumash, should be able to find something to them today, not only to the Jewish nation today, but particularly to them, how they should serve God today. Every Jew could th- theoretically find such works, instruction pertaining to his circumstance. And, and they should, really. But the problem is that not every man is privileged to recognize a specific place in the table. So they may know how to derive specific guidance from it. It's, very, it's not everybody capable of doing that, ultimately. Even the Torah law regarding things forbidden and permissible, and the glorious law of Lena, which has been revealed, everybody knows halacha. You can learn halacha to us and our children. But despite the difference between generation, the law applies equal to all, completely objectively prevailing. But son or the as you learn halacha, the more the more you learn halacha, the more you see halacha is not so simple. And the laws, we witness arguments from one extreme to the other extreme, one time, for instance, declaring perfectly permissible, another time is saying it's totally prohibited. And both of them are true. Both of them are true. The phrase, the words of the living God appear in plural form. When you say, that every when you have a machlekes with tanoim, you learn you know you learn halacha. You see that 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 ultimately you have a vast difference between two sages. Even the Gemara, you have a vast difference between Hillel and Shammai. That one is going to say it's good, the other say it's bad, and both of them are correct because both of them come from God, who's living. Chaim is plural. Hashem shumaka chaim chaim is so because what it say when we say it is divile kim chaim. That's what the Gemara says. Both Hill and Shammai are correct because they are they come out from the God, the words of God, which is life. That means both of it give life. Ultimately, you only can do halacha in a certain kind of a way. So you got to either do like A or like B. 
And the Allah will be like either Hillel or Shamayim. Because the diversity of opinion in Allah stems from the plural source of life of the soul of Israel, which is the living God within God and his source of life. And therefore, it can come into many forms. God, who is infinite, can give life to infinite opportunities and opposites even. Which in general divides itself into three different sources. Yemin, Usmail, Viemza, to the right, to the left, on the middle, which we know, Lunach Siddis, Shu Chesed, Hilo was Chesed, to the right, Shame was Gevura, to the left. And the way to do it, ultimately, main time is Rachamim, to do it in the middle way. So you have the famous example, the Machlek is of a, of a like, like, let's say, the, the Machlek is of a, uh, of a, of a uh, mezuzah. Machlek is in the Gemara. Do you put it standing or you put it laying? So those who put it, they're supposed to put it standing straight. And those that say they have to put it laying, horizontal. So therefore, you go in the middle. You go in a slant. It's not straight and it's not laying. So we have Rachamim. They're both. We're going to come to the middle. We're going to do it in the middle. And that's the constant of mercy, actually. That's one of the beautiful teachings that a mezuzah, when a dafka and a mezuzah in your house, we do that. We show that thing very interesting that it, specifically in a mezuzah, we come in the middle because for shalom bias, you need to come in the middle. You need to come to have a happy house. You got to go in the middle. You cannot go this way, that way. You got to come in the middle. That's the best way to bring peace in every house, to make up shudder. And we come in the middle. So everybody wins. This is an Augustine Kamila. And the souls which like Hillel, which is rooted in the attribute of kindness. An Augustine Gans Lahatik Lapa Chesed. So therefore, Hillel was more lenient in Allah. Lahakil. To be to make Allah decision and, and to be more lenient. Can know as it's known, which dictates the object declared permissible and thus capable of being sanctified if, if used in a sacred purpose, and so on, with the attribute of severity dictating stringency in Allah decision, and the attribute of beauty meditating as it's known, mediating to come in the middle. And again, as HaKadosh, the Alta Deba applies this principle to the legal argument between the school of Sham and Hillel. The school of Shammai was usually stringent because the spiritual source was the attribute of severity, and uh, Hillel was more lenient because the, he came for the attribute of kindness. In certain decisions, however, the position reversed. We find in Allah that sometimes Hillel was more stringent and Shami was more lenient. For the realm of holiness is governed by the principle of mutual incorporation, scholars. Because we're, talk, we're not talking about physical entities, we're talking about spirituality. So chesed and gevura do give space for others. There's a concept with a very important word, hiskalalus in Kabbalah. In chesed, it's a very important word, hiskalalus, incorporation, to cooperate with one another. With kindness containing elements of severity and vice versa. So therefore, Shammai, whose soul was, from the, was more from the side of severity, of gevura, of strength, also had... That's why Shami said, you should, you should re receive everybody with a happy face. Because he, he understood the concept of severity, of being stern and being serious and being, being, being focused. But nevertheless, he said, you have to smile. You have to have some chesed. You can't walk around. You be stern to yourself and smile to somebody else. Now, if one individual's spiritual tendency affects the way which he views the Teda, even in the area of Allah, which is instinctively objective. So you see that the even, so what do we see? That ultimately, even though Hillel was a great tzaddik and self-understood, was a great understanding of Teda, still in all, he was, his emotion affected him in a certain way. His, 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 the way he was created, the way his neshama was built, the DNA of his soul, which is more chesed, he automatically was focusing more how to make it all right. And sometimes he couldn't accomplish that. So he was, he was, he was stringent in it. 
But in general, he was focused more that way. Even though the title is, is lucid, so to say, it's there for everybody. Anybody can you? But ultimately, that's the way it is. So ultimately, if Hillel and Shammai, if you understand that Hillel and Shammai, if surely us, that we are much lower than them, and the circum our circumstances, our emotions, the way we're feeling at the moment changes, Pasha, the way we're going to learn Torah. Changes simply the way we're going to understand something, even a piece of Chumash. But Kolshkein, if you understand a Chumash, everybody will understand Chumash differently because it depends on his emotions, his circumstance, his situation. How much more so with subjectivity difference play in the role of the hidden matter, matters of God Almighty. When we come to talk about love of God or fear of God, some people have a natural disposition to love God. Some people are critical. It's hard for them. They're more analytical. They're more inner, inner focused and they, 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 they're more uh, judgmental. Because the heart, the mind, the heart of each person, according to his own measure, according to his estimation, and according to the gate in which he makes his heart to permit his intellectual understanding to pervade his heart and to generate within him love and fear of God. So everybody's going to love and fear God differently. As is known, how the Zayah learns the verse we say every Friday night, we say, Her husband is known by the gates. So the Zayah interprets her husband, of the verse refers to God. Who is the husband of the community of Israel? We know, attach itself to him by the Sha'arim. The Evishta is found at the gate, which as I interprets the sense of shot a gate, sheer to the measure, or has shot it to estimation. What does it mean? That the Evishta, as the expression goes, where is God? Will you let him in? Or the way you let him in? Or the amount, of, the amount you let him in? So that's what it means. That our husband is known at the gates. You want to see the way the Abish to her husband is revealed. He is known at the way the gate, the gate of each person, the, the entrance that each person lets a person in, whether it's the entrance, the measure, the gate, the estimation. The word shar can be explained in three different things. It's a gate, it's an opening, it's a measure, and it's an, it's an estimation. So therefore, you want to see where the husband is, you want to see where God is in, in me? Depends how much you open the gate. It depends how much you let in the Abishta, as explained above. At any rate, we see that being inspired in love and fear of God is intrinsically subjective. It's very subjective. It's there for everybody. The Abishta, the Tata is there for everybody. It's not an exclusive book. And it's open for everybody, even for a five year old child. So everybody can learn the Torah. Everybody should learn the Torah. It's self-understood. Everybody is going to walk away different. Depends the situation he is in. Depends his capacity. Depends his, his, his mental capacity. It depends his emotional capacity. It depends. It's very dependent on each and every person individually. So therefore, the Alter Rebbe said, again, why would I want to write this book? Why would I want to write a book that it, it would be much easier to bring everybody together and give them, explain to them, or even meet each and every person individually and give them their personal attention and give them the personal hayra? It would be much more easier, it would be more effective than to write this Tanya. But here we end uh, this, uh, the Fidik Rebbe stops over here. So that's where the, that's where the Tanya ends today. We'll continue this introduction to Mitchum tomorrow. As I said, I believe we start to Tanya, the first chapter of Tanya, I believe, on Thursday. I wish you all a great day, a wonderful day. Oh, 
Today is the 21st day of the month. The tillum of the day is 104 and 105. If you do chapter 104, 105, you do the chitas of the day. I wish you all a great, beautiful, happy day. Shem, see you tonight, tomorrow, 8 a.m. We'll continue the chitas of the day. It's an opportune time to invite your friends to come and to participate in Tanya that together Thursday, we should have 25 people on the Zoom to come to start the Tanya again and to learn together Tanya. Have a wonderful and beautiful and happy day.